Welcome back to another episode, and it's been a long time. This has been a long time coming. I have wanted to talk about Shenmue since I started the show, and I'm so happy that today I get to do another Video Game Memories episode and look back on my experiences with Shenmue and some of my memories playing it. Now, I remember when the Dreamcast was first announced, and they were talking about this game coming out called Shenmue, and how it was really going to change things, it was going to be really different. And it's gonna be amazing, it was gonna be like this open world environment and all this great stuff. And the creator was uh, Yu Suzuki. He's the guy who created uh, Space Harrier, Outrun, and Virtual Fighter. So I knew this was gonna be a very exciting game. I was just kind of wondering what the heck is this gonna be about? And I remember the early days of, of the internet, for say back in like 1999, checking out some of the videos. I remember being at work at the time and checking out these videos of the game in the environment. I was like, I couldn't believe it. It was like this amazing arcade game in this open world environment, uh, like Virtual Fighter, but kind of like an RPG. I, I couldn't really make sense of it in my head. I was like, wow, this is really fresh. This is really new. And I was really, really excited about it. I remember checking out these videos, like really crappy old uh, videos back then it was online. and being so excited about it. Now, the next time I got to see something on Shenmue uh, in video form, was this demo disc and it's from the November 2000 volume 8 of the Sega Dreamcast magazine. Great magazine by the way. And they actually had a playable movie. So you could just play the movie and check it out. I put this movie in and I remember it, I still remember it like it was yesterday, putting it in on a Sunday afternoon I had a couple friends over and we're having a couple beers, having some pizza, you know. And I put this in and we were like, oh my god, like I just couldn't believe it. It was like a real life environment. At that time, I'd never seen anything like it. It was so advanced. I just like the idea that it was like a free open world. And that at the time was something I hadn't really seen with these caliber of graphics. It was really different, it was really new. And I just loved it how in the opening movie they showed that, you know, how it was going from day to night. It was going from snow to rain. The environments were changing. And uh, it just promised so much stuff. And did it deliver? In my eyes, yes it did. I remember I left work and I went to pick this game up and snagged it. I grabbed the, the special edition here. I got home, just turned on the Dreamcast. I didn't have dinner or anything. I just sat down. I think it was like 4.30 in the afternoon and I put in the disc and it, the game began. Wow. It starts off with the opening with your father, sorry for the spoilers, father getting killed. You, it's kind of like, it takes place after that with you thinking or wanting to take revenge and you have to do a little bit of research first obviously, but I just remember when you first left the house, I couldn't believe it. I remember, you know, the doors opened and I walked outside and this eerie music played. I just remember, I stopped the game, I sat there and I just listened to the music for a second I was like, wow, this is... This is going to be a great game. Then I walked down the hill a little bit and there was the the city in 1986 in the game. There's all these characters talking and I walked up to them and I was like interacting with them and I just couldn't believe the motion on the characters at the time. It was like very advanced stuff at the time. You know, to look back now on the graphics, I still think the graphics hold up really well, but you have to understand at the time, you'd never seen anything like that. I, I personally had. I, just talking to the characters and just the environment and the thing about Shenmue which was so cool is that you could go anywhere and do anything you wanted to do. Like You could walk into somebody's house, op go to a drawer, open it up and leaf through the stuff. Or you, I, I always remember being able to go over to a, a bowl of fruit and you know just putting your hand inside and pulling out an orange and just looking at the orange. It was, you know, it sounds like the most hilarious thing ever, but at the time, it was so damn amazing. It was, it was so cool to have that kind of freedom to do uh, whatever you wanted to do at any given time. Now, arguably, that's what a lot of people didn't like about the game. They didn't like that uh, it, it felt very boring to some people, where I had the exact opposite of, uh, effect. Like, I was really enjoying going around and talking to people, and at first it's like you're a bit of a detective. You're trying to figure out who these, <laughs> I won't get into it, who these, who, who were those men in that black car on that day. Uh, it becomes a bit of a joke. There's some really, really funny, uh, funny dialogue in this game. Did you see a black car around here recently? 
I see lots of black cars. It drove through here at high speed. High speed? Through here? No, I didn't see anything like that. I see. What about that car? It's nothing. I gotta go. But you're a bit of a detective and you're going around and you're trying to uh, piece together what happened and uh, you're walking around town, you're walking up to, uh, you know, vending machines, you're, you know, buying capsule toys? Capsule toys alone? You know, maybe I should buy another. How could I resist? I had to buy another. And uh, I just love that aspect of it. And some people, this game wasn't for them. And this is one thing I will say about Shenmue right now. This is, this is fact. People, in my experience, either love Shenmue, like me, or they hate Shenmue. They thought it was boring. They they were waiting for something to do. They were like, oh, I walked into town and there was nobody to beat up. And Well, it's not really that type of game. It's more of a experiencing the world type of game and uh, experiencing the story as it shapes itself. So maybe one time you go to town, nothing happens. And maybe the next night when you walk back to town, there's some thugs in your way. And it's kind of like a real, it's, a, it's simulating a real life environment. So I guess, you know, for some people they didn't like that, and I, I can appreciate that, but I really did, and uh, there was a lot to like in this game. I, I remember sitting, I remember sitting for an entire Saturday, training in a park, just learning my, like, my moves, and I just practiced them over and over, and the more you practice the move, the, the better at it you would get, the more uh, damage and all that you, you could do, and I just, I just love that aspect, I, I thought it was really great, and uh, I thought it was a good story, like, the story had me in, and I, I'm gonna get back to it again, the voice acting, some of it is hilarious. Like some of these characters that you go up to, like, here's an example. Hi. Hey, mister. Wanna play with me? Sorry, maybe later, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, being down at the ports in the game, and you're like, uh, I'm looking for sailors. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah? What? Those men over there, are they sailors? Who knows? Why don't you ask them yourself? But don't start anything. Got it? Okay. Got a minute? Hey! The kid's saying something! Are you guys sailors? Mm. <laughs> that didn't go off too well as well, so... There's some funny moments, but I think... Those things as well make the game... Uh, as fun and as cool as it is. They're, they're absolutely part of the lore of Shenmue. Uh, part of the legend of Shenmue that make it up, and... Uh, there's a lot to like in Shenmue. I love the forklifts. You actually get a job in the game forklifting at the docks. You know, <laughs> no, while you were looking for sailors. And I gotta tell you, I've worked a lot in my life, and I've never had so much more fun working in a video game. That that was fun. You know, in real life, not so much, but in a video game, it was pretty good. <laughs> I love Shenmue. I, I'm a big fan of the first game. And sadly, the first game came to an end. But we were all really excited because on the Dreamcast, Shenmue 2 was supposed to come out. Well, it was supposed to come out, but it didn't technically, and what happened is the first game bombed. I'm telling you, it didn't do well, and I've always been sad about that. I, I really wish that Shenmue was a big hit for Sega, and it wasn't. So what ended up happening was the Xbox was coming out, and Microsoft came in and said, Hey, we want some exclusive titles. What have you got? And they said, Hey, well, we got this thing called Shenmue. Uh, we'll give you that. And so they said, Sure, we'll take that. So. We weren't allowed to get Shemu on the Dreamcast. Shemu 2 was cancelled. And a lot of people were pissed off at the time. I was one of them. I mean, I was choked. I was like, come on. Like, you kind of wanted it on a Sega machine at the time. And you just finished playing Shemu. And you wanted to import your data from the first game into the second game. That's what you wanted to do. Well, now you're being told that you couldn't do it. So a lot of people were upset about it. But there was a glimmer of hope. And that was... The PAL Europe release of Shenmue. It got released in Europe before they decided to cancel the American version of the game. What did everybody do? Everybody imported it. Any big serious Shenmue fan imported Shenmue 2. I was lucky at my electronics boutique, they actually got in one copy of the game. I think I read about it online that a couple of copies were going to some EBs up in Canada. So I, uh, Phoned up and said, hey, do you have a copy of uh, Shemu? They're like, yeah, it's coming in. I said, can I put my name down on it? They're like, okay, you're going to be up to, you know, in to pick it up day one. I said, oh, yes. I was there at the store opening. There's no way I wasn't getting it. I got it. 
uh, I brought it back to, uh, home that day and started playing Shenmue 2. And it's really sad. Shenmue 1 is a good build up. It sets up the whole storyline. Shenmue 2, you really start flying with the storyline. You really... The action is more action packed. The, the story is a lot... I, I think a lot better. We really get into our stride in Shenmue 2 and we go a really fantastic way and you meet a lot of really cool brand new characters. Now, this is the game and I'm not going to tell you what it is. That's one thing I won't do. Finally, in Shenmue 2, you actually find out what Shenmue is. And I remember playing it and when I found out what it was, I was like, that's Totally not what I thought it was going to be. And I really liked it and I, I, I really had to give it to Yu Suzuki that he would have thought of that idea. To, that he had a really big plan for the series. Like this series was supposed to be a lot of games. I won't say anything more but I'll just say up to that point that's that you're walking in a forest and uh, that has got to be one of the coolest moments in Shenmue 2 for myself personally. Was walking through the forest with the, with the girl character. I don't know, it just struck a nerve and you're doing some uh, quick time events to jump over rocks and things like that and just the graphics in the forest as you're walking through like you know, these nice little waterfalls and and it's just it's, it's a genuinely wonderful moment in the game it's a really I, I my favorite bit in Shemu 2 is that now here's where we get to the most important thing and again no spoilers I'm a really big person for that especially with these games because I'd love you guys to go check this out again, this series out again, it's that good. The ending of Shenmue 2 is epic. It is epic and I can't say, I really want to say, I really want to say kind of what happens but it is the greatest cliffhanger in Sega's history, without a doubt. The reason why it's also the greatest cliffhanger, I won't say story wise, is because we never Got Shenmue 3. And any of you guys who are watching, who are Shenmue fans, you feel like I do. This series just didn't make it for Sega. Like, Sega put a lot of money, they put millions into this, the development of this series, and uh, it bombed. And uh, I understand from their point of view, why are they gonna invest more money into something that's gonna lose money in their minds? Is that, but I believe that Shenmue has built up a, a cult audience. Like, you know, some, some movies do over the years. Some movies, when they get released, are bombs, but over the years, they get a cult status, and Shemu has a cult status. A signed copy of Shemu just sold on eBay for $250. Uh, a, a, an actual vintage Shemu shirt also sold for $200 the other day. There's definitely some fans out there that are really excited about this game, and I think it just deserves a third game, just to end it. You. There's no ending to Shenmue. And I think that's what drives the fans even more crazier. Let's keep on praying. Let's keep on doing whatever we need to do to uh, put some good thoughts out there that maybe Sega one day will revisit Shenmue in a great way, in a console way. Not on a handheld. I want a real ending to this game. I can dream. I can definitely dream. So guys, I love the Shenmue series. I love these games to death. I'm such a huge fan of the, this small franchise that was supposed to be a bigger franchise at the time. And uh, if any of you guys haven't checked out Shenmue, there's also a port uh, to the original Xbox of Shenmue 2. And uh, I believe there's a movie disc that explains what happened in the original Shenmue, so it can lead up to that. And uh, check it out, it's a fantastic series. Until next time.